Hey guys, it's really rainy out there today. Who's getting wet? Who's getting drippy and droopy in their drawers? Who's getting real chilly under the collar? And who's getting ready to be heated up because of all of that mess? Let's get hot on Smartless! Smart. Oh, boy. Guys, it is cold here in Los Angeles. You know what I could have used last night? What's that, Jason? Is an extra blanket, maybe even a Sherpa blanket, huh? You know where you could get, you know you get one, Jay? Where? 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 What? Well, if you go to, and if, if, I don't know if my, if my coordinates are correct here, but if you go to www.wonderyshop.com slash smartless. What's that? Yeah. That's that's our Merch Madness store. Can I get sweats there? Do they yeah, sell of Sherpa blankets in yeah, there? Yeah, of course. Can I get t-shirts? Yeah, of course. What about warm so warm socks? Yeah, yeah of course. Oh, that'd be great for the cold weather. <laughs> do you like now joggers? Here. Do you like oh, phone yeah. cases? What uh -huh. Sure. Uh -huh. What does he look like, do, the jogger? Do, do you like pop sockets? I don't even know what those are. I'm going to buy three t-shirts and a Sherpa blanket right now at www.wondryshop.com. Dot com slash smartless. You did, did it again. It? You only did two W's. W -W -W it's going to be three W's. So hard for me. And this is the World Wide Web? This is yes. it. Yes. Dot yeah. one yeah. Shop dot com slash smartless. Go. We got all this new smartless merchandise. It's so good. The hats are amazing. Listen, for storytellers like us who are creating oh, content. <laughs> no, but just hear me out. As a content yeah, creating no, uh, storyteller. Yeah, we got it. It's, we got it. We got it. We got you it. can yeah, come yeah. and we really load up. We got it. Load you know, yeah, speaking of loads. Um, Wait, really quick. I just want to talk about this because it, um, it's been in the news for several weeks. And I'm so obsessed with the UFOs that they're shooting down. Yeah. And um, today I was watching the news. And it's funny how they, they're they kind of skirting around it. Like, like it has to be alien stuff, right? It can't probably be. Probably not, no. Sean. Probably no, no, not. But, but it can't it can't just be weather Tell balloons. Tell Scotty he can stop painting his face. Um, it's not, there's not going to be a big, a big <laughs> thing. Tin foil out of the windows. Yeah. Okay. No, I, I th think it's just, it's a different kind of balloon. They're flying a different kind of surveillance know. device now. I think so. They said it's not surveillance or anything. No. Mm -hmm. Somebody pointed out that if aliens sent these craft over here from wherever the hell, they, they wouldn't be easily downed by our dumb, uh, weapons. You, you never know? know. Missiles. You never know. Right. They might be dumb too. They might be dumb too. But anyway, you know who isn't dumb? Our guest today oh, wow. has quite the stellar and sparkly reputation. You, oh, I yelling? thought this was Willie's guest. This is yours? This is mine, yeah. Sean's guest. There so, it is, right there. You on guys the are going to crap yourself. This is so fun. Really? Yeah, I can't believe we get to talk to this fella. I might get a little starstruck, not just because he's celebrated here in the United States, guys, but he's very much celebrated internationally, too. <gasps> really? By the way, he's not even American. Many fans may not realize he was once cast as a James Dean type and a Rebel Without a Cause type adaptation, which I'm obsessed with. I'm the first thing I'm going to talk to him about. And word on the street is there's no one nicer in Hollywood. His first name in Hawaiian means cool breeze over the mountains. Guys, it's the legendary Keanu Reeves. <laughs> no. Cool breeze over the over mountains? Really? Wait. I didn't what? know that. Going, this just picked my mood up. A lot. Where are you? Are you in a hotel room right now? I am. I'm at the Four Seasons in West Hollywood. We're, we're not paying for that. We're not paying for that. <laughs> no. No, I'm doing some uh, John Wick Chapter 4 press for a film that I, I can't was wait in. to talk about it. You sure. put this into your junket schedule? That is a very nice thing to do because that, yeah, that's, that's, that's a haul it's doing that you stuff. Fellas. Come on. No, yeah, but but you're tired and you've been doing lots of press and then you got to talk to us idiots. No. no. This is um, so cool. No, no. Okay, we're going to up our game. We're going to up our game because what you got, what you got, a couple of round tables after this or you got. No, you got, I'm good, man. I'm yeah. good. All right. I'm good. Uh, dude, what, great to meet you, man. Yeah, cheers, cheers. been such a, a huge fan for so long. I can't, I, it's so nice to meet you. Yeah, this is so cool for us. <laughs> so, Keanu, let me ask you something, because um, we, as, as a Canadian, I, we always claim you as a Canadian. Is it, are, what's your Canadian status? Really? Where, where would yeah, you but, put but, it? But, but wait, let me just jump in with that. Beirut, oh, okay. born in Beirut. Born in Beirut. Canada, yep. Chinese, Hawaiian, yep. European. I mean, Do you want him to answer it? I mean, you can tell me. Oh I mean, God. I could just look up his Wikipedia. and show off that he did research. Yeah, the story of my past is obviously the story of my mother. 
Um, and so she ran away from home when she was like 15. And she ended up going to uh, Beirut, Lebanon. And as you do, she yeah. was uh, born in England. And she met a guy and they had a kid and that's me. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And then it's, it's a long story, but my... Uh, Sounds step, romantic. My, it does. It yeah. was, there's a bit of adventure in their journey. Yeah. Um, and then uh, my father had a stepfather who was Canadian. And then there's a bunch of stuff that happened. But long story short, uh, me and my sister and my mom ended up moving into a house in Canada. Mm. Um, and so that's how I became Canadian when I was like seven or seven years old. Did you, so did you go to, uh, you went to school, a lot of school in Canada, in Toronto? Well, I went to, I was raised in Toronto and uh, I went to, I went to Jesse Ketchum. Did you really? Yeah, do you know it? Fuck yeah, I do, man. Yeah, really? Easy, Will. Of course. Oh, look yeah. how excited. Now he's up. I, grew, I, I graduated from Leaside High School. Leaside? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, um, the two high schools that were, our grade school fed, uh, what the fuck were they called? Uh, Northern and. Northern, yeah. Uh, North uh, Toronto. I went to NT. I went to North Toronto for one year. You did? Yeah, I went to North Toronto for one year. I'm trying to remember the other school, Jarvis. And Jarvis. So my sisters went to Jarvis, and my nephew is graduating from North Toronto this year. Well, congratulations. Thank you, and congratulations to <laughs> is you. Is so, that right, eh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so uh, are you a Maple Leafs fan as well? I was. I was. I played a lot of ice hockey as a kid. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, I played a lot of hockey. I played a lot of hockey. Yeah. <laughs> no more. You don't you don't you don't play in one of these Hollywood uh uh leagues or teams. You know, I never got into the Hollywood leagues. I played a lot when I when I got here. I played I mean, I played in some leagues in Los Angeles and I discovered that you could play pickup hockey basically every day. Yeah. Really? Um and so I played a lot of that and uh, I mean, I'm a I'm a goalie. So is Will. Uh, oh my god, Will. Take it so easy. I, I I played goal at North Toronto at the at the rink there at North Toronto, right? At, I, nice yeah. rink. Yeah, nice rink. great Good rink. Ice. By the way, you should be noted, uh, I got an email today from somebody I know here in L.A. saying, hey, do you want to go and play uh, pickup? They call it pickup hockey. Of course, uh, we call it shinny, but do you want to go and play some pickup hockey in this league? And I said, man, I just wrote back like two hours ago. I was like, I'm too old, man. I can't. <laughs> no, but what, what if what if what yeah. if they're old too, and then everyone takes it easy in the corners? Everyone's yeah, old. but you know, and then you end up you, you fall or you take a bad hit, and then you're like, "What the hell am I doing? Man? What am I doing out here? What am I doing?" Out here? <laughs> <laughs> and then I, I went to I went to four different high schools. In, wow, uh, Toronto. So I went to North Toronto for two years, and then I went to a performing arts high school. Got kicked out of that. Sure. Really? Then I went to I went to De La Salle on Avenue Road. Dude. I pl- Dude. That De La Salle is on Farnham, and I grew up on Farnham. What? I grew up. I grew up a hundred yards from De La Salle. What? Yeah, yeah, you guys probably walked by each other a million times. You're both yeah, the same age. How old are you? How old are you? Will? I'm 52. I'm 58. So okay. Close. But I, yeah. You were probably you were probably walking along the street there when I was like a punk kid. You know, uh-huh. that's amazing. Yeah. Wow. Not, yeah. That's wow. wow. And then and then there's a Hawaii in there. No. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, my father's Hawaiian, so he uh, he he uh, grew up in Hawaii, and then uh, he got into some trouble, and so he ended up uh, going to Beirut, Lebanon, too, and that's where he and my mom met. Where did your mom go How, before Beirut? Where was she? Uh, she was born in England, and she went to uh, Paris. Wow! She was interested in fashion and design and so i think she worked at a fashion house atelier and so you guys just moved around constantly yeah yeah even in toronto there's a lot of i got a lot of gypsy in my story yeah you got a lot of good stuff cursing through you yeah, yeah. is your uh, now uh, is your is your sister in the arts um she's in the equestrian arts okay whoa or she mm-hmm. was in the arts yeah so she was into horses training horses riding could do anything everything on a horse and that was her deal and my, my, so my husband, Scotty, he is an army brat. He's moved, he moved 17 times before he was like, you know, 20 or something like that. Wow. Um, and, but moving around made him want to desire to be stable in one place and never move again. Are you like that? Or did that upbringing make you feel you like, are you drawn to like different experiences all the time? Hmm. 
I think both. Oh, okay. Yeah. If you can be both. I mean, I think... You can. I mean, I love traveling. I love new experiences. I mean, I think, you know, with the arts that we're in, you know, if it works out, you get a chance to travel around and, yeah. you know, meet folks. And, and um, so I love that experience. But it's also important. I mean, I love... I love a good couch, a little home. Yeah, who you know? doesn't? Yeah, good God. And uh, and then, of course, then the itch starts. <laughs> yeah, yeah <laughs> and exactly. And then it's a fever, yeah. and then you're distracted, and then how long? Like, how long are you good uh, on the couch without without any work or or without any any work that you know is coming up? Because that, that's just wants to measure thing. it. You just want to measure yeah. it to yours. That's yeah. like if you know work's <laughs> coming up, like you have a start date on something. I can sit on my couch for six months, yeah. but if I don't know anything's coming. I, I, I'm about two weeks. Oh, yeah, you're an unemployed. Yeah. I call it the uh, working on working. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, I, you know, it really depends on what the what the journey you had before you're unemployed. Right, right. You know, like, if you, <laughs> you know, if you have, like, if, you, if you've been working and it's been really intense for five or six months, you know, you come out of that, you know, you might not be thinking about being unemployed and working on working for a day or two, but... Um, Right. For two months. Yeah, you don't, you don't do a, you you do jobs that l they they shoot a lot of nights. There's a lot of action. Yeah, there's yummy. weapons. Yes. You love but that. I mean, like, Yum. you don't have like easy Yum. days on your movies. No rom coms for you. <laughs> no, well, I like a good rom com. I got to work with Ali Wong. I did a couple of days on an yeah. Ali Wong show. <laughs> she's I, funny. Know, I've done. She's amazing. And uh, but no, I've I've had the uh, fortune to do some uh, pretty. Uh, some pretty epic shooting. Like, I mean, working on Matrix 2 and 3 was 22 months. Wow, oh my yeah. God. And all the John Wicks are like, that That ain't no phone in. Yeah. No, there's yeah. no phones. Well, I, remember, <laughs> I, remember, I remember seeing that first John Wick. Well, first of all, I mean, for, now that we're, you've opened, you you opened up. Yeah, I had a Matrix. bunch before that. So, we'll get, well. Yeah. Okay, well, I'm, everybody's got a bunch. I mean, John, Jesus, well, why are you Go arguing nuts. with me? I want to talk yeah, to and He's tired. He's not going to deal and with that one. I'm really tired. And and so I remember what, being in New York, uh, 1998, when Matrix came out, I want to mm. say. And, uh, I didn't know that. That's I know, because I have a weird that. thing with days. And was I couldn't have been more blown away. I had no preconceived notion because we weren't inundated at that time all the time with the phones and stuff of leading right, up to and stuff. Content, so yeah. you could kind of go into a movie clean and just for what it was. Fuck, man. That was such a game changer for me, that movie. Did Keanu. you know while you were filming it with the effects and all of the stuff that it was a game changer? Um, I mean, you never know while you're making something, but... yeah. I knew with the Wachowskis, the directors, I knew their vision was extraordinary. I knew the yeah. script was extraordinary and the cast. And then once it got all put together, I mean, I think of that film as a perfect film. Yeah, and, it's amazing. It, perfect. And it is like for me too, watching that film, because I hadn't seen him with the visual effects and all of that, just like. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. great. I, I remember, <laughs> Keanu, my, my oldest son is 14, and I remember just within the last couple of years, the moment of like when I was like, we're going to watch The Matrix, man. Yeah. And and he's like, well, and I go, we're just going to, we're going to watch that because I wanted him to have the experience huh. that I had. But, you know, you, you but you've always been a re, in the greatest sense of the word, and I don't have a better word than this, but a, a, a real director snob, like in the way that like you, you don't work in Keanu Reeves vehicles, you work in director vehicles. Mm -hmm. It seems like to me, like you really appreciate someone who's got a real plan, a real vision and you kind of work to service that as opposed to yeah i want to be the star and let's just find any director that'll do mm -hmm. um to, is that is that um yeah i mean i i that, that's kind of you to say i i have um obviously as you guys know i mean you, you want a director with a vision and i've i've had the chance to work with some directors who have been able to realize their vision in such yeah. extraordinary ways mm -hmm. and uh so to be on those sets, to be working with those artists um, is the best, man, you know? You know, Keanu, it, what, it, it seems to me it, that you have 
the choices that you have seemed to make all the way through a very long career, you have done so much different stuff. You know, certain people, you can see them, they get sort of into a theme thematically throughout their career. You can see this sort of through line. You've done stuff. You have just zigged and zagged and consistently done different stuff. And maybe that's, I don't know, maybe now I'm going to draw the line back to like your upbringing, sort of moving around a lot. Like you Mm. like new experience, new stuff. You've done period stuff. You've done the action stuff. I'm thinking of speed with Sandy and, oh, yeah. or, you know, and, and, and then. You can't pigeonhole you. It's, and yeah, it's yeah. an adventure. Yeah. Bill and Ted's My own like, private Idaho. My, my, dude, Where is dude, it? it's fucking. Now, it's first crazy. of all, Bill and Ted's. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent adventure. <laughs> I mean, that was, that was a game changer. One for of the most quotable career. movies. I mean, I was a teenager. I was 18 or something when it came out. We were fucking dying. Oh, and we, we watched it a million times. But yeah, so you start to, and you do all these different things. And you, it seems like you have like a thirst for that. It kind of goes into like taking jobs for the right reasons, right? Like, is that something that, are you constantly being like, yeah, I want to do something that I haven't thought of or that's scary or that's... Yeah, for sure. I mean, growing up is, you know, I always wanted to do as many different things as I could. You know, that's the hope, right? Mm -hmm. And, And I find that, you know, oftentimes lead roles have certain expectations on them and whether in any genre... You know, and then, and then there's also times we're working in independent or being, you know, in supporting roles. You get to kind of do some interesting kind of nooks and crannies and, and, and have different voices, different tones and tell stories in different ways. So that if you have the fortune, you know, if you have the opportunity to do a studio film or and then an independent film or something like that, then uh, it's the cinema, you know, getting a yeah. chance to to play and again just tell different stories and I play love different that. roles and try and do that by the way i don't know if anybody ever brings this up but dracula is one of my favorite movies of all time yeah i think dracula i mean i don't know i, I got kicked in the teeth and maybe deservedly so for my english accent but they they may anyway um, no one of my favorites one of my favorites. but i, I, I think loved, i loved think it. um but my english accent aside i think that's a wonderful film and i think incredible Francis Ford Coppola made a, a work of art that was maybe a little ahead of its time. Yeah, it was amazing. I mean, the performance, Gary Oldman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. God, amazing. So amazing. good. Oh, my God. Yeah. Are you, anyway. do, you, do, you, do you remind your team constantly to, to sort of find really interesting things uh, as opposed to super lucrative things or star vehicles or things like that? Or, or, or can you take responsibility for, responsibility for that? Because it just seems like every everything you do is is always interesting and it's never down the well, middle. That's very and, kind of you to say. But it's true. It's I mean, true, it's true. Yeah. And, I'll, true. and I'll bet you get a lot of uh, a, a lot of offers to do things that would be a lot easier, a lot more predictable, a lot safer, a lot more lucrative, perhaps. Um, and so, has it been the same team forever? And they just kind of know what makes you tick, or? Um, yeah, that's the the representation story is is. Uh, been pretty consistent with the people I've worked with over the years, but that's changed over the years as well. But I yeah. think, at least for me personally, it's it's always um, been like kind of what I was talking about. Like, how mm-hmm. can we have a variety? What's what's the filmmaker? Where's it yeah. being made? What's and again, what's the script? What's the right. story? Yeah. What's the role? Yeah, be, you know, because like, first of all, where'd you get the bug? To do it because when you were into, oh. w- w- <laughs> why are we artists? <laughs> yeah, yeah, the yeah. unlicked cubs. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> yeah, because when you were in Tor- because when you're in Toronto, like cubs, <laughs> when people people like you that that just are transcend, you know, whatever you, you you we just said it a million times how how incredible your career is. Do you is it something that finds you or you find it and why? Um, I kind of grew up in a showbiz background. My uh, mother was a costume designer. Oh. I had a stepfather who was, you know, at the time was, you know, I just finished directing some plays on Broadway um, when I was a little bean. And uh, and then growing up, um, yeah, my mother says that I came to her when I was 15 and asked if it was okay if I'm an actor. <laughs> um, at 15? At yeah. 15, and she said, yes, of course, son, whatever you want to do. And then, uh, 
Um, and then I started, so I was pretty self-motivated and, you know, enrolled in um, a theater arts program, which, will, you know, um, you might even know, the, um, it was up by North Toronto, uh, Leah Poslin's Theater group. I don't know if you ever came across I that, but, know, um, but yeah. there was a wonderful person there named Rose Dubin. But anyway, so I was super self-motivated. You know, I auditioned for the performing arts high school and mm -hmm. I was at the library. I was reading. I was just, you know, taking acting classes with a hog in respect for acting. I'm 17, yeah, yeah. <laughs> of course. you of know, course. doing the Stanislavski <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, voice work. I, and I, you know, I ended up getting an agent at the at the at Leah Poslin's because I was playing Mercutio and Romeo and Juliet, um, and so I guess that was my first big break. Oh, that's cool! Yeah. And you're like, this this tastes pretty great. Yeah, yeah, I got an agent. I started doing some commercials. Did sold some cornflakes and some Coca Cola. Yeah. Oh, and wow. you drove all and you drove all the way out here by yourself from Toronto, and you're still not an American citizen, which I think is kind of cool. I, well, I get it's it. It's cool and not cool. But, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, you know, I, I got in my first car when I was 20, and I drove to, to Hollywood. And, mm -hmm. uh, of course, when I got here, they wanted to change my name. And, really? <laughs> yeah, they were like, Keanu, it's too uh, ethnic. <laughs> and I was like, oh Lord. I mean, literally, like, the day I arrived. I mean, I remember I, I had driven across the country, and remember they told me and I was like stomping up and down along the beach in Santa Monica going, what the fuck? Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, and then yeah. like, and then I was like, okay, well, what's my name going to be? And I was like, Templeton. Or like, <laughs> anyway. Did they pitch you any names or, or, or did they ask you to go think up some? Yeah. So eventually I came up with my first and middle initial. So I was Casey Reeves. <laughs> no way. No for way. For a couple of. That couple would of, work. Yeah, that Casey would be Reeves. good. Oh That's my awesome. God, please! But, uh, but then you'd be a great Casey. No, man. But then I had like auditions, and they'd be like Casey, and I would like <laughs> wouldn't even look up. <laughs> and eventually, I went back to my agents, and I was like, I can't change my name. Yeah. <laughs> like one of the first plays, uh, one first play I ever did was um, was I was playing John Proctor, and. Uh, one of the lines is just like, you know, because it is my name, because I can have no other. And I was um, the crucible. <laughs> That's a signal. I was uh -huh. in the crucible. And, uh, and I just, that, that was just running through my head, you know. <laughs> and so, so with Ted, was, was Bill and Ted's the one thing that really like, how did that come to you? And, and that, because that kind of put you on the map for us to know who you are, uh, right? Uh, yeah, I think for me, probably, you know, the biggest Another big break that we all need is I, I was in a film called River's Edge. Yeah. Oh my oh, god! Right, dude. right, 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 right. Of course, what a, with Crispin Glover, with the amazing, amazing. beautiful Crispin Glover. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, that great. movie what is what I do oh. for my fucking friends. <laughs> um, <laughs> and to, to watch that artist work, you know, yeah. talk about being and seeing an artist kind of deal with what the ex expectation of a role could be or how you could even act how you could even be in a scene mm. you know for me it was a revelation so he was doing it completely differently than what you thought it was going to be just reading the script yeah i think everybody's standing there in the room right i mean right. it was yeah. just but but he had the essence of what the role was yeah yeah and he had his unique voice on it which i think we all do right we all yeah have our own voice, but the way that he was performing and how, understanding the form of acting too, the way that he understood the camera, the way he understood choreography, and where he would go with his voice, the choices that he he would make, mm -hmm. were was something to me that was revelatory. I do, I do love that part of what we do. You know, like the audience doesn't read the script before they see the movie, so they have no they don't know what they emotions, don't know. So they get what they get, and they don't get upset unless somebody sucks. And, you know, like, usually people don't suck, you That's know, true. the people that are taking these big swings and you just kind of, but I bet if these, if, if the audience would think for one second, like, if you read all these lines on a page, 
Would mm-hmm. you imagine this kind of performance? And nine times out of 10, the answer would be no. That's what everybody on the set is dealing with. So the 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 instinct is to criticize it and say, oh no, that you can't play the character like that. You know, a director will come up and say, hey, easy with that. And let's go over here and take the character this direction, you know, and, and but the audience is never gonna do that. So if it, an actor just needs to push back just a little bit and say, well, hang on, I'm still gonna get us there but it might be a little wiggly through mm-hmm. here. Like, just let me do that. Let me play it like this. And and with that, you get, you know, so many artists, but, you know, yeah. you get, like, Christopher Walken. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. You, you know. can't write that. You just, that's performance, and you you can't give it a false negative because it sounds and looks different than what you imagined. Do you remember, yeah. do you remember Crispin Glover in Wild at Heart? Um, and he's, he's sure. in the, he's plays the, he's got all those flashback scenes. And he's the guy who's got, a, he's like upset. He's got, um, he's got uh, cockroaches in his underwear and they, and, and he's <laughs> cutting bread. <laughs> he's cutting bread. I just, I love Wild at Heart. It's one of my favorite movies. And you just hear, uh, I forget his character's name. Like, what are you doing? And then he's cutting and he goes, I'm making my lunch. <laughs> and he's just in this like underwear stuffed with and you're like what a wild choice and you just yeah. know that David Lynch gave him a ton of room but Keanu like you know not that there's there is an art and and a cha- and challenges in Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure and 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 the sequel and the and Speed and all of these things they are you know what people call you know popcorn movies but they're just as difficult of roles and movies to make um uh, were you did you have uh any kind of trepidation from going to being so trained to going into these kinds of things and worrying about the perception of them um at the time no man i was trying to work yeah yeah for sure <laughs> and, yeah uh, for sure and i you know and i loved like for the script of of bill and ted's excellent adventure um the audition process for that film is like almost legendary. I mean, I think everybody read for that, and it was. Oh really? But I, but I got to meet uh, Alex Winter. Yeah. Um, at that time, and uh, we just had one of those things where you like you're both in the waiting room to go audition, and you're like, hey, hey, and then we started talking, and he's like, yeah, I ride bike because I have my helmet. I go like, I ride, and he's like, yeah, well, and then he's like, I went to NY, NYU film school, and. He started mm-hmm. talking about movies and like, and then we were working on the, we started to audition and, you know, with those, with those roles, he and I both kind of both independently came to the idea of Commedia dell'arte yeah. and the uh-huh. physicality of these kind of classical Commedia characters. And so like there was Bill and there was Ted. And so how would you, what was the physicalness? How did they play off of each other in a kind of punch and Judy kind of way? But like... Um, and so we had a, we had an instant kind of vernacular and a way to approach these roles that, that, uh, was really exciting and, and hilarious. Yeah. It was, it was just it was so much crazy. fun to play and, those. And that was something that you guys, I, first of all, written by the, by the great Ed Solomon too, right? I mean, great, Ed great Solomon writer. Chris Matheson. Yeah. Just so, and, and was that once you guys kind of keyed into that, what, what, you know, like you said, there were so many people auditioning for it. Was it just like you hit and it? George like, Carlin. And then you have George Carlin. Oh, George Carlin. Set. I forgot that oh, Carlin right. was in that too. <laughs> yeah. What was that like, man? Man, he was so nice. He's super low key. He and Alex would go talk politics and do all of those things. Yeah. yeah. One of my, I mean, he was so lovely. I remember he, uh, he's one of the few people I've asked for an autograph. And he, and I was kind of like, sir, can I have an autograph? And he was like, sure. And he wrote, uh, Keanu, fuck you. <laughs> and, and then I was like, oh my God, George just said that to me. I was like, cool. And I took it so personally. And then I found out down, down the years that he would actually write that to other people. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it wasn't special. <laughs> but it's special that you did that, man. Is there somebody that you got over your years, other than George or, or these people, that you were just completely blown away, starstruck by? Gosh, so many. So many. So many. I mean, I. I asked for an autograph from uh, Lou Reed for a friend. Mm-hmm. Sure, for a friend. He was just like, shoo. And then he kind of <laughs> scribbled it. I think I gave he him carved some, it pathetic in your hand. Of, <laughs> some pathetic piece of paper. But he's like, yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. Dude, what do, you, what, do you, what do you think about... 
it seems like, man, again, it, I just love, you, you've just had such an interesting, like, really, really um, unique trajectory in in longevity. And then it seems like the last couple of years, people, it, it, I feel like every five years, people reappreciate you. Like a new group of people are like, oh my God, Keanu Reeves. And the last couple That's of common. years, it's true. And, and people go like, and then you've just become this thing in the last couple of years, like everybody has recognized, and it's obviously because of a lifetime of being a good guy, people are mm-hmm. starting to really recognize that about you. And you've, be, you've kind of crossed over, and I don't mean to embarrass you, into this kind of weird, look, man, whether you like it or not, and you can, you can avert your eyes so you don't have to look at me when I say this, you've been a sex symbol for a long time. None of us have, any, have oh, that, yeah. have that yeah. weight. And now Welcome to the club. Yeah, yeah, then you've kind of, but then, and then you've kind of Thanks, gone, and so you're like an actor and a sexy one. And then you've kind of, you've now gone into this kind of like iconic s- status, Old like with, with culturally. No, I mean, by the way, you're 58. I, I know you look. I'm not exactly coming on you. Same. You look great yeah, for 58. Yeah, yeah. Um, he is uh, actually a great match for you, though, Will. I mean, think about his his, his <laughs> passions. We would be great where if, he we, came if from. either of us were gay. We'd be perfect for each mm-hmm. other. Yeah. But. But I, but it's it's an it must be kind of a bit of a trip because you're like I'm still me, and you haven't done anything different. You get up every morning and have your coffee the same way, and then all of a sudden you're right. Has it been kind of trippy in a way? Yeah, I mean, I think all of us have kind of had the experience of the before and the now with communication. Yeah, Mm -hmm. and so I think you know. Certainly now, in the now, you know, to your point, Will, I mean, I think right now I'm, I'm, is, you know, nice is nice and can be super nice. And and I'm really grateful for it. Um, I do know that that is fickle. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. But, uh, yeah. But, um, but, you know, I think, you know, memes and stuff like that, you know, I remember the first time someone showed me sad Keanu. And I, (laughs) I was like, what is this? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, I was used to paparazzi photos, but I wasn't used to a paparazzi. You know, I could see how, like, you know, the, I was used to tabloid communication, right? Right. Yeah, right. And so this became, that was the before, and now mm-hmm. the now is something else. And, you know, and for me, I was like, I was just eating a sandwich, and I was, like, in editing, <laughs> and I was, like, kind of, like, down and, like... And then, and I came up with, the, you know, in order to kind of pres- self-preservation, it was like, you can see a picture that can tell a thousand words, uh-huh. but that's always not going to be all the story to tell. Yeah. Right. But in a meme, that kind of um, lensing or focusing, um, and then the, the way it gets shared or transmitted. Anyway, long story short, that was pretty fucking funny. Yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> and weird. It was funny and weird, right? It's fucking yeah. weird. It's, it's fucking fucking, it's weird. And like, here you are on a candle and you're carrying a lamb. And, um, you know. Do you, do, you, do you ever think about the kids today who are coming up who were, you know, think about like when you were coming up and you were doing Bill and Ted's and all these great movies and you sh- shot out of a cannon. Can you imagine having to have the scrutiny that there mm. is now? Yeah, no. I mean, it's scrutiny and responsibilities, right? Right. I mean, I think... And you're a kid, so you don't know anybody. So you're kind of dumb. We're all dumb when we were kids. Yeah. Yeah, I unfortunately kept that going. But, um, yeah, yeah the... Uh, the um, yeah, I mean, I do. I mean, I, I... You know, I've heard of just a lot of artists having the pressure to be on social media in order to get a job. Yeah. Right. Right. Like to yeah. even get in the room. How many followers have do they have? And, and yeah, the following kind of aspect to the um, kind of capitalistic idea of it. But um, yeah, I mean, I bet it's tough. I bet it's tough. But also, I'm sure it's pleasurable for some people too. Right. Yeah. So I, you know, and there's artistry to it and involvement and creativity. But um, I think I think the the now is definitely more intense pressure on your private life than the before yeah i mean the before had a lot of pressure too but i think the the now is even more yeah for sure well i mean when you said you were 58 it's like you're keanu reeves is going to be 60 in two years you've had you've gotten a lot of shit done yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, you've been busy, motherfucker. Yeah, I, I know, I mean, but I haven't hit the one hundred. 
<laughs> I want to be. I want. I haven't I hit the hundred. I want to be a hundred too. That that's no, no, goal. but hundred years old, but also a hundred films. Hundred films. Oh, yeah. How films. many you got? Yeah, I I don't know. I think I'm in the seventies. Yeah. Wow. Well, you got time. You got time. You got plenty of time. Just don't get stuck directing a bunch of them, and you know, oh, you, know you'll, right? you'll lose a bunch so of time. Yeah. yeah. Wait. Speaking of though, um, okay. So I want to get into John Wick because I have a bunch of questions. Okay. So um, first of all. Let me just start. We do have a connection because, and I'm kind of stating the obvious here, we have the same personal trainer. Yeah. So Patrick Murphy is fantastic. The best. The best. I love him. He's the greatest. And he's trained you quite a bit, as I understand, and he's nothing but incredible kind words to say about you. That's, that's and, 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 and like me, he's always blown away. Like, a lot of people are blown away by the fact that you, you do all your own stunts. I don't do stunts. But you had to in the first John Wick. No, it looked, I do you're action. falling on your back. I do action. He doesn't call him stunts. Oh, sorry. You do Dude, action. Like a, first like of all, an you illusionist. guys have the same trainer. I yeah. mean, is he so exhausted after working with Keanu that by the time he gets to you, he just... <laughs> He's deep there, into I'm, fuck it. There, there's a real fucking... I mean, this is... Okay, this is... Let's... Stand up and make up. a bagel, Sean. <laughs> Stand up and make a bagel. Let's yeah. Here we go. There it is. Yeah. <laughs> um, so anyway, but, okay, so you do your own action. Is that right? Well, no, it's a big difference, right? Okay. Because okay. if I'm there, if John Wick gets hit by a car, yeah. Yeah. I'm not doing that. That's a yeah. stunt. Yes. If John Wick right. is no, in no. a fight scene, sure. I can do the fighting. And if, if I can do a judo throw or if I'm going to fall on the ground. But let me say but something. But not jump off a bill. I'm sorry. Sean. No, no, but let me just say something. <laughs> because you fall, because I'm, I've am i seen them. And so I'm looking at them, and it's your face falling on the ground. Yeah. Yeah, well, I do. Well, that's you know, falling action. The, but that, no, but that's the lens, right? So maybe right. I'll do the double action. I'll do the... All own. right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I mean, listen, I, I get to ride some horses. I get to drive some cars. I get to, like, you know, run and jump and, and do a lot of, you know, interactive fight sequences. But but P Patrick praises you, like, no end because he just says you have such a high threshold for pain. You're, like, the second if you hurt yourself, you're back in the game right away. Like, I, I heard or I read somewhere that you... The f like the first day or the first week you're shooting John Wick 2 that you injured yourself and you just got up and just kept going. Like it's like a football player. Yeah, yeah, there is. But I mean, but that's the kind of the joy of it too, isn't it? Like it's not <laughs> I don't know easy. about well, that. I mean, it's <laughs> like not easy, Once you get man. past I mean, 45, it, it's not super enjoyable. Yeah. I mean, at 58... I know, but, but if you, you can you do it, right? If you can I, try, yes, if you but, can try, if you can climb... If you can climb the mountain. Right. But <laughs> doing it, it's got to be a lot harder now. Let's... Well, but let's, who gives a... Who cares, man? Hard, smart, whatever. Are you having yeah. to... No, but shoot. Come on, man. I fucking it's cold, love this guy. It's raining. Yeah, baby. It's hot, it's whatever. It's like you're not comfortable. Well, whatever, yeah, man. Get out of here. Like, tell him, Keanu. Keanu, let's tell go. Bateman. You fucking let's, let's go, go, Bateman. Let's go, what the man. fuck, dude? <laughs> fuck it. All right, <laughs> listen. Um, but wait. I, then I heard this, too, from Patrick <laughs> told me this, that people stop you on the street and give you feedback or ideas about the John Wick series. Oh, like, yeah. You should do this. You should do that. Is that yeah. true? Yeah, once in a while. And there's some good ideas and stuff. But Really? <laughs> Yeah, I mean the, the world. I mean, I think that's what's really. I'd be like, I what think I, I really got appreciate. Well, I re, no, I, re, I really appreciate with John Wick how the world has opened up, right? With the idea of a high table, mm -hmm. there's so much mystery in the mm -hmm. in, in films, but in a weird way, somehow it all makes sense, and you and you you authentically feel that everyone has a past. Yes, I love that because the first one is like, you fucking kill my dog, I fucking kill you. And you're off to the races, right? Yeah. And and that's what the thing is. And yeah. that and then it just kind of grew and grew and grew. I'm kidding. It's deeper than that. But I'm. Uh, but it grew and grew but from there. Really. But yes. Yeah. But not. But not really. But. but it's so cool. It's really really cool. Yeah. Um, revenge and freedom. Is there, is there anything you heard over the years in that feedback from your fans? Like, what is the main people? What is the main thing people say? Like, I think people try to like connect why it all is happening and they try to connect yeah. like maybe my wife is really is she really dead is she part of the high table is the character winston is he really yeah. pulling all of the strings what's yeah, yeah, the yeah. bowery king is is uh is it a fever dream is john wick is this just you know so we have we have people trying to kind of connect dots and try and kind of get a big overview of the story. It's and, really and, cool. And yeah, it's kind of fun. When, when, you, when you do a film like the John Wick films, uh, 
do you what is your because they are so physical uh what's your when you rap what is your sort of recovery what, what do you are you are you like i need four weeks on a beach or four weeks at home mm-hmm. with the door shut or i need to like go to parrot like what do you do to like recover from those really grueling movies after after when i get home after i finish filming yeah, them yeah mm-hmm. yeah um yeah it starts with uh um collapse <laughs> <laughs> yeah and then but but, it, but it's an interesting thing i don't know if you guys have found this but like i don't know coming off the road or coming off the series or you know the work that you're doing you can be really tired but then there's also a restlessness Mm. Yeah, I don't know if yeah. you've experienced that. Like, you know, you went, I'm just going to stay home. Well, I'm just going to get up and go get something from the fridge, or yeah. right. you know. But there can also be the periods where, like, don't talk to me. No, I don't want to work. But then you're like, but there is a restlessness. And then once I get through the restlessness from it, then it's like I go into a world that I don't quite understand in the sense of like, how do I rest or who am I? What is the meaning of life? Uh-huh. <laughs> what am I doing? You're trying to reconnect with people, you know, because making films of that kind of time scale, you're in a time machine. You you know you you know everyone around you, then you go away and you go down the river on your kind of independent journey. They're going down a river and then you have to meet up at the other side of that you know, yeah. the distance yeah. of travel. So so much of their lives have gone on. Yes, you can have contact, but you're not involved, you know? And yeah. so it's kind of in a weird way syncing up to those around you and syncing mm-hmm. back up to your life, mm. you know, at the same time that you're totally exhausted, restless, questioning everything. And then, of course, you have the fear and desperation of being unemployed. Yeah. Um, and then you want to, you know, then you're back into it. Is yeah. it as much of a of a of a draw for you as it was when you were just trying to m- make something of your career and and something of yourself and and carve something out? Because um, it, it seems like you're very um, respectful uh, of of life itself, like the real stuff, as opposed to you know career stuff and making fake life. Um, and having done so much. Uh, do you start, and I, I'm just, I'm sort of projecting myself, right? I mean, I'm 54 and you start thinking about, well, we're closer to death than we are to birth and like, oh, you know, sorry, like, no way, 54. <laughs> well, I'm just, you know, like at what point do you, do you like, what's the right ratio? You know, um, do you think about, well, there are certainly, I'd like to play a role like this and a role like that or direct them this or go do a play or whatever it is. Like, do you have certain things you still want to check off? Yeah. Before you take a uh, a, a bigger before I die of life yeah. <laughs> um, before you kick it and before I kick it um, yeah I mean to answer your question I'm, I'm I mean I I guess part of it is I still love acting and I mm-hmm. still I still love the creativity of it yeah um, and I still have ambition and hope yeah and mm-hmm. I still. Um, want to do good work and work with people, and yeah. so I still want to do that. And I, yeah. I love and, the I love the goal of a hundred. That's a hundred. Yeah, and I, when I want to be a hundred, that would be fun. Yeah. Any any big thing pulling you f- uh, in, in life? Like, do you have certain places you'd like to travel to? Uh, do you have a, a sport? You'd well, I'm like hoping to, to do a play on Broadway. Or, yeah, I mean, I haven't done that. So yeah, do that. Go. that sounds good. Should, like Sean, Sean's got his Sean's play playing at the Tabasco Theater. Um, <laughs> it's gonna be hot. Tabasco. Yeah, yeah. They Isn't that the Velasco? <laughs> oh, <laughs> nice. The How do you know, you know that? Oh, that's you know good. That? Isn't that? <laughs> the uh, Tabasco. <laughs> hey guys, check out everything's the hot. It's a hot night at the <laughs> theater. So it's a hot theater. You it's come hot. in cool, you leave hot. Hey, uh, Listen, um, I feel like this would be a generic question for anyone else other than you. But what's your favorite action movie? Oh, oh shit! One of your favorite action movies, or one of them? Yeah. The answer. Oh my gosh! Oh my! And God. was there one? You think and, I'd have that like yeah, ready something. on my sleeve, right? Yeah. Like, oh well, it's here's the list of the favorite action. Come movies. on! I don't think I do. I don't have one. Um. Okay. Well, what do we mean by an action? Like movie? you know, there's action. I mean, because it could be like a, it could be Bruce Lee and Enter the Dragon, or it okay, could be Raiders of the Lost Ark. It could be Raiders know. of the. It could be Rollerball. 
Mm-hmm. Oh, you is, said that, is that an action movie? Roller or ball. Is that sure, it some, is. A science yeah. fiction. Yeah, no, no, no. That was good. No, but it, you almost no. said Raiders Could of the Lost Ark. Could it be Chitty Chitty Bang Bang? I mean, yeah. Said, I mean, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, that car gets hairy. I mean, I don't know. I mean, but <laughs> I mean, I just to answer your question. I mean, I grew up, I mean, like, uh, what is there, like the Towering Inferno? I mean, what about all of the chariot <laughs> movies, right? Yeah. What about the Westerns? What about, Gumball Rally. What action <laughs> movies are we talking What about, oh, I mean, I guess formative. I mean, um, I don't mean just people like moving in, in a scene. I just meant like people no, fighting. I, know. I, know. I mean, like, okay. I know they're know. fighting and blowing stuff. I'm, I'm kidding. Good I'm for kidding. you, Keanu. I mean, to I'm, fucking, I mean, yeah, Sean, define it. I mean, <laughs> listen, Keanu, John Wick 4, right? Four. There's four. It's, There's it's, four. It already it was released in, in March, and it's uh, how great is I can't wait to see it. That's kind. Yeah, Thanks. I can't wait. I'm a big, Thanks. big fan of you Thanks. and those movies and all your movies. We've taken up a lot of your time. Thank you for being here. We love you. You're the man. You're absolutely yeah. you guys, the man. You're yeah. very cool. Yeah. Fellas, thank you very much. It was nice to meet y'all. I'm jealous you, that Sean had you as his guest. You've been on my wish yeah. list for like two and a half years, so I'm so can, happy I you're can, here. I can support that. Yeah. 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 Um, stop ducking me out there. Uh, you know, we, I'd like to spend more than just uh, 57 minutes with you. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Cheers, Come man. have dinner with us one night, all right? All yeah, right. That'd be so okay. fun. That'd be cool. Great. Thank yeah. you. Do, right. do you live in Los Angeles, Keanu? I do. Okay, I do. I'll just text me the text me the address. All right, all so. Right. Cool. All right. <laughs> we love you. Thank you for being here, pal. Thanks for doing right, this, Keanu. Thanks, man. Thank you, buddy. Guys. Thank Take you care. so much. See you, pal. Bye. Hey, guys. It's Keanu Reeves. Yeah, that, that was Keanu, Keanu Reeves. Reeves. Did you recognize him? I did recognize him. He has guy, not the changed. Guy, he's not changed a bit. 58 years old. He looks exactly the same. He's 32. He looks 32. You, Jason, you look like his older brother. You son of a bitch. You know what I mean? Bitch. <laughs> like, um, but wait, how, he kind of skated over the fact that, I know he didn't, well, I call them stunts, but action sequences, whatever. He has too much respect for, this, for, for the people who do he's stunts. He's so unassuming. He's he just, is so unassuming. And it's all real. But I'm not dissing them. I'm just saying, you know, take after take after take, movie after movie after movie, your body just, I don't understand. Can can you say do you maybe can you guys relate to this when you were younger did you have like I didn't have an older brother so mm -hmm. but I had I had guys who were like uh my dad my my godfather's uh son Ward Brown was my idol and he was a couple years he was like 3 years older than me and everything he did I wanted to do he played high, everything cuz I like looked up to him I was like blah 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 Keanu, I could see, is one of those guys that I've always... He's, like, a few years older and, like, I just want to do it. What is yeah, he doing? Like, totally. He's so totally. Cool, right? And he's got that... He he lives in that same space yeah. that, for me. So totally. I feel the same way about Pitt. I'm like, and everything. Oh, hey, man, how's that going? Yeah. <laughs> what are you doing? Like, yeah, oh, yeah we're just... Oh, <laughs> no way. I, I know. I, they're I like, do that. It's like a cool factor I'll, yeah. never, I'll never achieve. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, you started out nice with it. You, you shared the same uh, uh, body instructor. What's his name? Bo body, body instructor. <laughs> What's it called? Guys, <laughs> 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 my brain's broken today. Okay? A, a, a trainer, like a personal trainer. Like a the body trainer, right? Oh, body, so you it should. Is. A body instructor. Listen. Oh, but you know, but he also seems he's so humble and unassuming. So humble. Yeah, and I love it's real. Showy. And it's all so real. Doesn't need any attention. He's no. almost shy, yet he's in a yeah. public pu public role. Yeah. Uh, I, I find that uh, admirable and interesting. Uh, I didn't even get to the thing that I said in his in his uh, 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 intro, which was he. I wanted to ask him. The whole point of my intro was to ask him about. He starred in Paula Abdul's music video, uh, Rush Rush, in, in the 90s. And I was like, why is Keanu Reeves in this video? It was so wild. I remember it was like a big deal because I was obsessed with that video. Anyway, Maybe he was dating her at the time. I, that's what I wanted to ask. I was well, like, he's not. He's to... way, no, no, no. He, he's way too discreet. He never would have said. Call him and, back, Sean. Okay. No, let's <laughs> get, get him back, back in here. This is the first time we ever want to get it. We want to get a guest back. We didn't get to a lot of stuff because there's so much to talk to uh, talk to him about. I know. I want to talk more about the Matrix stuff, but anyway. Well, but, yeah, but I mean, you did he, a he, terrible job asking questions, of, <laughs> if I'm being honest. Yeah, today. you're going to lose your nomination yeah, next year. you are. Oh, you've already lost. You've already lost. You're never getting back to host of the year. Well, I can probably see that award go. Bye. 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 <laughs> You're just using a bye for bye, huh? That's right. Okay. Smart. Smart. Less. 
Smartless is 100% organic and artisanally handcrafted by Rob Armjarf, Bennett Barbaco, and Michael Granteri. Smartless. Hi. 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 So, listener, hi. Before we go, we wanted to introduce the audience to someone very special today. Please meet someone special. Smartless Media is doing uh, our very first uh, podcast yeah. called Bad Dates with the Bad amazing, dates. incredible Jamila Jamil. Hi. Guys, welcome Hi. to Jamila. 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 Do I clap yes. myself? Yes. Yeah, clap yourself. Enthusiastic. Yeah. Clap yourself. Thank in. you. You can give yourself the clap. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Now, speaking of giving yourself the clap, this is called bad dates, <laughs> right? right? So uh, unbelievable segue. Yeah, yeah. is, is are, the show's are there, called Bad Dates? Yeah, yeah. And and are you? Well, tell tell the listener what uh, basically what it's about beyond what the title says. It is relatively self-explanatory. It's just me and some of my favorite comedians and people coming on to disclose the sordid details of the silliest and weirdest and grossest dates they've ever had. And the reason I love this subject is because it's very bonding. It never fails to ignite a conversation wherever you are. It brings bound, like barriers down. But also, it's, there's just a democracy to it because it just doesn't matter how hot you are, how smart, how rich, how famous. No mm. one is exempt from a shitty fucking day. Right. But I would, I would guess that you have never had a bad date because yeah. you seem to know how to communicate in any way possible to make it all work like you yeah. can be you can answer the questions or you can or you can ask the questions like yeah, some people that's... just don't only don't know, know how to do one it comes to a standstill when I am um I'm not going to say aroused, but when I'm interested, mm. uh, mm -hmm. all of my skills fly out the window, and oh, really, really, like I have no way of I have no way of uh, receiving um, a sort of social cue. So, really, you have to be inside of me for me to understand that you're interested. Oh. And obviously, oh. given the current climate, that's yeah. not appropriate. But, you're, but right. you're saying if you like the other person, you start to lock up a little bit. I complete. I sh I lock up and I shut down. Yeah, it's, that's, it's, Will's it's got a that with uh, Charlize Theron. He can't. He just every well, season is up. You don't need to. You don't need yeah. to go wide with that. No, she knows. <laughs> don't worry. She's she's it's aware. It's fine. Well, we all have that with Charlize Theron. Yeah. Like, have you exactly. have you had a favorite guest yet on uh, Bad Dates at all? I mean, anybody in, comes to mind? Who could or? you Who could you be hinting at? I don't possibly? know. Uh, Sean, have... you've been a wonderful guest oh, on the show. Oh, <laughs> Sean. Well, give us give us give us a taste, Sean. What was your? Well, I don't want to ruin date? it, but yeah. I, it, it starts out with me meeting a guy in a bar uh, with workout pants in a bar and we're both super drunk we go back to his place and he Oof. before we get to the goods part of the story he asks um can i do you mind if i microwave a burrito really quick before sure. we go at it <laughs> i swear right. to god not a euphemism <laughs> not he a wasn't euphemism. asking not a you euphemism. Would, by the way i would have loved if he said, said you cool if i shower real quick before we keep yeah. talking <laughs> 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 oh. Oh. Yeah, yeah, it was a, it was a real dream. She was on with Conan O'Brien. We've had Tig Notaro. We've had Nikki Glaser, Margaret wait, Cho, wait, Paul Wait, Feig. wait, wait, Conan's been on a date. Uh. I know, <laughs> just, just That's the one. The most sh yeah, yeah. And That's it was a disaster, thankfully. So. <laughs> He came on the show to talk about it, but it is just like, it is quite astonishing how much I've learned about a lot of very famous people and also just how many people have shit their pants uh, on a date. I don't know if that's literally. something that any of you have, have literally shit their pants. No like, way. It's, oh, it's no. actually like, it is, it is the great equalizer. The asshole is the great <laughs> equalizer of humanity. And I think it's been overlooked politically, but we've uncovered it on the show. Yeah. Fascinating. Wow. I want to hear all about that. I am tuning in. Oh, by the way, you just got Jason's attention. The uh -huh. dates and the hooking up, fine. <laughs> no, it's fine. But once you get into the, into Short the shitting, yeah. uh, the anus. that yeah. is that the is bowels of the story. wheelhouse. Sean, am I right? Yeah. Oh, Could for you sure. call the show Shit Show? I, oh. I basically should. Um, okay. But I mean, there are varieties on, on what we're learning on the show. But it is just, I just want people out there to know that you are you are not alone if you think you are. Like the stories are so wild and so funny and so absurd. And we're not shitting on single life because God knows married life is fucking its own mm. nightmare. Mm, uh, sure. But we're just trying to like have an intimate, funny conversation about something yeah. that I think is deeply relatable. My story amazingly didn't involve any shit. But um, I've had my own like extraordinary disaster. Sean, I've told you the story before, yeah. but yes, 
I can sure. share it with you if you want an Please idea. Please do. Give, yeah. give us a taste. Just, just, just of a how taste. much disaster is out there. I um, I tried to have a, my first ever one night stand because I've, I've only kissed six people, right? Uh, in Come my on. life. That's, but it is sadly true. Uh, I started very late and then I uh, I was slow on the uptake. Um, and so I, I thought, you know what? In my 30s, I'm going to have my ho era that I've always mm -hmm. dreamed of. It's going to sure. happen. And I, uh, I, 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 I got the sense that I was about to have my first ever booty call. A man that I'd been sort of casually going on a few dates with, just hanging out with. We hadn't done anything yet. He uh, texted me and said, uh, Do you want, like, shall I come over? And I was like, oh, 11 p.m. I'm definitely going to get my mm -hmm. first... Uh, so you can even hear what's happening to my voice just talking about yeah, it. I, know. <laughs> yeah. I suddenly become like a bit more like Mary Poppins about the whole thing. Um, but uh, I was like, oh my God, I'm going to get a casual shag. It's so exciting. Uh -huh. So he, he, he turns up at my house, 11 p.m. on the dot, walks into my apartment. I've only been living in America for a week at this point, right? So I don't know anyone or anything. And uh, he takes three steps in and collapses face first <gasps> on the ground. And... All of his front teeth, no. we're talking at least 12 here, shoot out of his mouth no. across my entire living room. So now there is blood and teeth all over my room and he's having a seizure. No. So I've never seen someone have a seizure in real life before. And mm. I panic, I think he's going to die. I call 911, which is also slightly exciting because uh -huh. you know, I'm English and they call that in the movies. So I feel very Hollywood right now. <laughs> I call 911. Uh, they, um, they send in the uh, fucking police turn up, the fire the brigade, paramedics. the paramedics. Everyone comes rolling into my house. I now have about 25 men in my apartment, which is not how I'd expect. And you're my just first in lingerie, right? Go. You were ready to go. <laughs> yeah. No, not quite, but um, close. Uh -huh. um, and this man is covered in blood. He's He's he split his chin all the way open and uh, they're trying to resuscitate him. They managed to bring him to and they're like, excuse me, sir, like, you know, have you have you taken anything? Uh, do you have epilepsy? And he's like, oh, I might have had some cocaine. But he was like, but I always have cocaine. And I was like, oh, <laughs> it's a small red flag. It's, it's not a huge catch. one. It's a little, no. It was just, uh, I, I think the word always uh, at his age yeah. felt slightly um, disturbing. Wasn't going to be um, a short date. No, exactly. <laughs> and then they were like, have you taken anything else? And he was going, no. And he's having to treat like this because he's got no teeth now. Oh, um, my God. And so they start putting the blanket over him to take him out. And as they go past his cock, he gets a raging erection, which feels uh, inappropriate at uh, the moment. And they're like, sir, have you taken anything else? Right. And he turns around and he looks directly at me and makes full eye contact and just goes, I might have had some Viagra. Which uh, is, I might have had some Viagra for oh, those wow. who don't wow. speak toothless. No, um, that's a, so that's a combination you don't want. Yeah. Huh? So then you hook up. So no, yeah. <laughs> so you <laughs> so get like him quickly the ambulance sucked him off. Uh, right, there you go. And then sent him on his way. Um, yeah, he got carried out in uh, on a stretcher in the middle of West Hollywood. A, a quite famous actor. Uh, so we had to put a blanket over his cock, but also one over his face. Wow. Uh, and he's just there's just like pitching a tent through West Hollywood uh, as he gets taken to the hospital. So that was um, that was my first and last attempt at a booty call, and have been in a, a long term relationship since a week from that day. <laughs> Oh, I can't God. wait to get you drunk you, you, one day and find out who that guy was. I, know, I, can't, believe, I can't believe Thoreau has never told us this story. I know. Right. <laughs> He's usually <laughs> pretty open about his yeah. mistakes. <laughs> Normally you'd think that he would... Uh, <laughs> um, well, wow, Jamila... So that is what can happen. I, I know, see, I live for those kinds of stories. And you can <laughs> see <laughs> how everybody has one or two or five or ten of these horrible Ask stories. Ask her if she's ever forgotten a line on stage. You know, yeah. she's got any weird <laughs> hey, theater stories. Hey, give me a really horrible theater story. They're just yeah. a yeah. dynamic. <laughs> no, you have no, to that's... tune into Smartless for that one. But for all bad date stories, tune in yes. to Bad Dates. When when do when do we get to start airing these things? So March 20th, it'll be on Wondery Plus and Amazon Music. And then March 27th, it'll be on all services. And you can just yeah. sit back, relax, and and enjoy the truly horrible tales of some people's dating experiences. It's just amazing what we'll go through to get a shag, isn't it? Yeah, mm, that's true. Well, that is true. <laughs> that's a, boy, that's a quote. Uh, <laughs> well, we're lucky, uh, Jamila, that we have you taking us through this. This is yeah. going to be so great. We're we're really excited. And for you're our it. first. You're our first one. You're our virgin. Yeah, you're podcast. our first one. Thank you. No pressure. Thank you at for all. signing up. No, yeah. no pressure. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. I'm a massive fan of all of you, so I'm going to try my best not to let you down. Um, but I don't know if I can because this podcast is so it's weird and gross that I itself. think it's going to fly. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, well, thank you. We're big fans. Thank you for doing this, and uh, we can't wait to listen. Likewise. Thank you. Thank you, hon. Bye. Bye, Jamila. Bye. 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 <laughs> Smart. 